Hi, I'm Georgie Borod, and I'm here at ARDA with Luis Lara, who is a Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of ResortCom International. Luis is new to the organization, and he's going to share with us a little bit about the new direction that ResortCom International is taking. Um, Luis, could you tell us a little bit about your background before you came to ResortCom? Yes, I was the Chief Financial Officer for a large hotel group in Mexico, uh, Camino Real. Weston Hotels. I worked there for three to four years, and uh, that was like my financial background. Then I joined RCI Latin America as the chief financial officer for the region, and uh, did business development for them. And after that, I became the managing director for all of Latin America, and uh, I worked there for almost ten years. And after that, I joined Royal Holiday as the chief executive officer. And I was uh, running uh, the operations there, uh, the company, for close to eight years before joining ResortCom. Well, it sounds like you've got a, a very long and rich history and tradition uh, in, in the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's showing well on it you. As, as a 25-year-old man, you have a, a, a very <laughs> strong... Almost uh, uh, go, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, And I know that ResortCom has been around quite a while as well, um, almost a quarter of a century. Could you just fill in us in briefly about how they've evolved uh, their history uh, in the industry and a little bit about their company as well? Yep. Uh, ResortCom is, uh, I think, the only integrated solutions company in the industry. Uh, the range of services are from uh, providing sales and marketing uh, platform solutions access to, to timeshare developers to doing loan servicing and collections, maintenance fee, uh, club servicing, reservations, rental programs into running the resorts themselves as property managers. Um, I know recently they've gone uh, into a new pathway within their umbrella. Could you fill us in on that a little bit? Uh, the, the, the tapestry uh, creation. Uh, what happened is that we are creating a stronger brand for our, uh, property management through the creation of Tapestry Resorts, which is a division of the company that specializes in uh, rentals, reservations, and property management of resorts. We also have a strategic alliance with Latour, with Tom Latour, and we have uh, Latour Signature and Latour Resorts for high-end and ultra-high-end fractionals. And on the other side of the equation, um, the services that you offer, can you tell me how those might differentiate from some other companies that might have some of those services available? Well, we believe we have the best uh, systems platform in the industry. It is really powerful and strong and stable, and uh, it allows our agents to be more efficient uh, they get to uh, whatever they need to do for the customers with three clicks only. And we have been able to create a large call center in Mexico City to migrate uh, many of our functions. So we have a lot of flexibility in scheduling because Timeshare is a very seasonal uh, product. So uh, maintenance fees get billed at the beginning of the year, the end of the last year, you need a lot of people, and then you need a, uh, flexibility to scale down. So you need larger call centers. And uh, through the solution that we have in Mexico City, we're able to have a very, very large call center with all the services integrated to that. Mentioning Mexico City, and I know this isn't the only thing that makes you a global company, but I understand that it's ResortCom International. Could you talk to us a little bit about the international qualities of ResortCom? Yeah, we are currently managing a resort in Phuket, Thailand. We're about to sign uh, three more deals in Thailand. And uh, we have uh, really strong plans to develop Asia. Uh, we're also uh, working in Mexico, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. Uh, we are managing resorts in Hawaii. And now we're going to start managing resorts in Venezuela and Colombia. And uh, we're entering Brazil with our uh, platform solutions and uh, all our range of services. Well, that certainly is an international flavor. What do you see, how do you look at the future for ResortCom? I think that although the uh, economy is uh, down at this stage and people are complaining and there is no receivable financing and all those tragic things, we're doing very well because we are moving into markets that are uh, growing 
or in some cases booming. We're not staying just waiting for the North American market to come back. But when the North American market comes back, we will have the range of products and services that the market will need for that stage as well. And how does that translate, do you think, um, looking at the shared ownership industry as a whole? Do you have any, you have uh, a lot of expertise and you're really um, an authority in this area. Where do you see the entire industry moving in the next few years? Do you have any information to share on that? I think there's two things that can happen. It's by market. There's two things that can happen within the North American market. Or they adapt to the fact that there is no receivables financing or it's very limited and they start creating strategies to get more cash at the table or in the short consolidation phase after the sale, or they will have to wait for the lenders to come back and then go back to what the volumes they were doing before uh, the, the lending became so scarce. So I, that's what I see for the uh, U.S. market. For the Mexican market, it, it's really dependent on the traffic. Uh, the hotel occupancies are a little bit down. Uh, prices, ADRs are down, so the quality of your tours is not the same. You're not selling the same average price, you're not selling the same volumes. But as the economy starts rebounding, they will go back selling the same volumes too. And there are very interesting markets in other places where you're really talking about a local market that's not affected by the huge economic uh, crisis in the same extent as it's happening in the States, which is the largest economy in the world. And for Europe, it is tough because legislation is exaggerated for the product and it's very difficult to get uh, the type of product and service that Timeshare is in such a difficult environment. The, the good developers are still there, have found ways to work around it, but it's not a growing uh, industry and it won't be until they can really go back to the legislators and demonstrate that they are for real and that the legislation has to be adapted to the developer's needs and not only uh, consumer protection. So I'm understanding that you're saying to look at it market by market rather yeah. than as in a global. It's not, it's not something that you can generalize. It's very different. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.